Tonight, a case of false hope, or nearly 300. That's how many Arkansas inmates thought they had an early shot at freedom and now don't. The system wants to keep them behind bars because of a mistake it made. That error has them and their loved ones angry and upset, and lawmakers demanding answers as to how this could have happened. This is my son, and these are all of his kids. It's been more than three years since Kimberly Charles last saw her son. All of their birthdays, all of their holidays, all their Christmases. Everything's just been put on hold. For Sharon McLaughlin, seven years have passed since she hugged her fiance. He had a job waiting on him, family waiting on him, had reunited with his own son. Their loved ones have been in and out of prison for breaking into homes both looking forward to being released soon. He would have been getting out this year, the end of this year. Those long awaited reunions though, coming to an abrupt halt. It was just, it was, un, it was like we were blindsided. It's just, I can't really put into words. Instead of freedom, both Kimberly's son and Sharon's fiance will spend nearly a decade longer behind bars despite plea deals. The reason? A seven-year mistake by the Arkansas Department of Corrections, which admits it wrongly interpreted parole eligibility law, giving false hope to nearly 300 inmates. To add 10 more years because you made a mistake, that's not fair at all. Under Arkansas law, anyone convicted of two violent felonies is not eligible for parole. Violent felonies are mainly crimes like murder or kidnapping. But in April of 2015, the state legislature reclassified residential burglary, making it a violent offense as well. For the next seven years, the DOC's policy was that any residential burglary committed before the law changed would not be considered a violent offense when calculating sentences. DOC employees even going as far as reassuring lawyers and public defenders that their client would not have to serve all their time. The problem? The DOC was wrong. We should not have done that. I'm not mincing words. I'm not making excuses. We should not have done that. In a room full of lawmakers last October, the department admitted it made a mistake changing its position, now saying parole could be denied because of a residential burglary charge before April of 2015. We were incorrectly applying the law, and as a result of that incorrect application, we provided guidance inconsistent with the law. If the government makes specific representations to someone that this is going to be the deal and then goes back on their word, I do have a problem with that. And that appears to be exactly what the Department of Corrections did. The department notified 290 inmates that instead of a chance at parole, they would now be serving their entire sentence. On average, another nine and a half years behind bars. If all of a sudden the Arkansas legislature decided that they were going to say that speeding tickets are no longer misdemeanors and instead are violent felonies, what that effect would be if they applied it retroactively is a bunch of us would go to jail. David Slade is one of the attorneys on a class action lawsuit filed against the Arkansas Department of Corrections. His client, Christina Davis, has a prior conviction of residential burglary from 2012. Slade says Davis relied on guidance her public defender got straight from the DOC which clearly stated she would not serve her full time. Davis, who is eligible for parole in 2027, now won't be getting out until 2039. The rug got completely pulled out from under her. When we know we've made a mistake, that the court has been very clear that we have a duty to remedy that mistake. And that is what we've done here. But for Kimberly and Sharon, that simply isn't good enough. You're saying I'm sorry as if you are not affecting anyone's life. We're not talking about two more days or uh, an extra month. We're talking about 10 extra years. 
The Arkansas Department of Corrections says it realized there may have been an issue as far back as 2016, but it wasn't until last year that it sought the guidance of the Attorney General, which is why the department says it ultimately changed its position. We did reach out to several lawmakers who say this issue will be addressed this legislative session. From a bill to remove residential burglary from the list of violent felonies, to one aimed at resolving the issue for the inmates currently impacted by this. We dig even deeper into this story with an extended version you can watch right now on KRK.com.